Welcome everybody. Today's video is going to be about the evidence that you can use to determine if a chemical change has occurred. So if you're looking at a situation and you're trying to say, eh, is that a physical change or is there a chemical change? Because sometimes there's a gray area in between. Well, there are some particular pieces of evidence that you can use to determine if it's a chemical change or to justify why you said it was a chemical change. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to imagine a mad scientist mixing things together. And what do you visualize happening? Normally, when I ask kids this question, they imagine fizzing or bubbling, exploding, color changing. Um, sometimes they're imagining particular glassware, like flasks and beakers and graduate cylinders. Um, but a lot of these things that kids imagine when they think about this are actually signs of a chemical change. Okay, so one of the main pieces of evidence that a chemical change has occurred is gas being produced. And so really when you think back to the mad scientist thing, uh, when bubbling is happening, really what that is is gas coming out of a liquid up to the surface. So gas was produced that caused the bubbling. Fizzing is just the sound of that bubbles of the gas being produced. And exploding is really a result of a lot of gas being produced, especially if it's in a sealed container and the gas pushes on the container and breaks it. That's what an explosion really is, is a result of the gas being produced. Now you still have to use your brain, okay? Because it's gotta be unexpected gas being produced. It's not just because I heated something. So for example, yeah, of course it's going to bubble if I boil water, but that would count as a physical change because it's still water. It's just now water vapor in the air, okay? So it's still water before and after, even though it bubbled and even though there was gas produced. So you've got to do some thinking. You can't just say, oh, there was gas produced. It's a chemical change. You can't, you got to still use your brain, okay? Next major sign is unexpected color change. So mad scientists, things turn from like green to blue or yellow to pink. Um, those are uh, good signs that a chemical change has occurred. But again, you got to use your brain. So if I put green food coloring in water, that's not a chemical change. That's something I would have expected it to turn green because I put something green in there. But if I mix two clear liquids together and it becomes green, now that's a sign of a color change, uh, of a chemical change because the color changed. And you think about, okay, well we list cooking as chemical changes and baking, those usually result in a color change. Usually the dough is rising or the, the cake mix is rising and that's a sign of gas production. Um, so rusting is another common example of a chemical change and there's a color change with that. So it's gotta be a color change that's not explained just because you put dye in or you mixed paint colors together. So the third one's a little harder to imagine when you're imagining like a mad scientist mixing stuff together, but you've all experienced it before. Have you ever been to a sporting event where somebody sprained an ankle and out of the first aid kit, they picked out one of those like packs that you crack it and it becomes cold? Well, what they've done is, is they've allowed two chemicals to interact and you're like breaking plastic or a piece of glass inside and now the chemicals interact and it changes the temperature. So an unexpected temperature change is also a sign of a chemical change. Okay, so these instant cold packs or hot packs, the hot hands sort of thing where you, you break it and it gets hot. Now again, I have this word unexpected because it's not because I've heated it. I didn't all of a sudden put this package in the freezer which would explain why the temperature changed. This is an unexplained temperature change. Now, the fourth one is one that is fairly rare. You're, you're probably not gonna encounter that. And that is the formation of a precipitate. So two liquids are put together and boop, out comes a solid. 
okay? Um, I didn't cool it down to make a salad. Here you can tell a salad is forming because see, it's very opaque. And if I were to let this sit long enough, it would, um, can, there would be a salad at the bottom. It would like settle down. Here is a video that shows you this. So you will see there's two clear liquids. Here's one clear liquid and another clear liquid. And okay, we see a color change, which is one piece of evidence, but um, it's also this opaque color and given enough time, it would condense and become a solid. Okay, it would settle at the bottom of the test tube. To demonstrate a chemical change, and we're going to be able to see three of the four different signs or evidence of a chemical change, so we're going to use these three products. I have baking soda, which you're probably familiar with. Um, this is calcium chloride. It's commonly sold as a um, ice melter for your driveway. And we have phenol red. This is a pH indicator that will change colors. Uh, if something becomes a little more acidic or a little bit more basic. And we're going to mix these three together in a very particular way and look for evidence of a chemical change. So what I've done is I put baking soda in one corner of the bag and then twisted the bag. Here I have two scoops of calcium chloride that I have twisted in. And now I'm going to put in 10 milliliters of phenol red. Okay, I have about 10 milliliters of phenol red. I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. This lab actually works best with a partner. It's a little hard to do this one-handed, but I'm gonna zip it up. I'm gonna try to squeeze out any gas. You can already see a color change has occurred, probably from the little bit of materials that are in the bag. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and untwist it and allow things to interact. And it is getting very hot. This corner with the calcium chloride in it is very hot, where this corner is a little cool. But as I mix it all three together, you will see a color change. You can both hear and see the gas being produced and I can feel temperature change. It's really hot right now. So here I'll try to take the temperature of this. Can you see the thermometer is going up? So as you can see I'm taking the temperature of this and you can see the the temperature going up on the thermometer. It has gotten very hot. Uh, I did not put this on a stove to heat it. It happened on its own. So we just witnessed three of the four major evidences of a chemical change. We saw gas produced. We saw a color change. It changed from red to yellow. And we saw a change in temperature. So if you think of this activity, it will help you remember three of the four major signs of a chemical change that you can use to justify whether something is a chemical change. The only one we did not see was formation of a precipitate, which is basically when you mix two liquids together that a solid all of a sudden forms. Okay, I hope this helps. Have a great day.